happened in accordance with CDC media protocol for standards committee members and public, no filming will be permitted. I emphasise, no filming will be permitted. Apologies for absence. Do we have any? We have apologies from Council away. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting have been circulated. Is it your wish that I sign those as a true and accurate record of the last meeting? Will we agree? Any against? Any abstentions? Uh, sorry, on page one, I did draw um, attention to um, one, of, one of the officers under 47, um, members of the conduct, disclosure of interest and standard arrangements. We obviously noted it, but we also had an action from that. We were asked to go away and fill in forms. So I don't know if it's, it should be this one and just noted. We had to all fill in a form about the, um, um, the £100 issue, because most of us sort of felt I think 25 was enough. And uh, when it came to full council, I was surprised to see £100 was the figure that became a, a bit of a public story. I think the majority of us elected members thought 25 was fine. So that needs to be somewhere more than just noted that we noted the report, because we actually had a discussion. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. That um, was part of a questionnaire which does raise a number of questions on the, on the current uh, code of conduct and the regime is part of a review. Um, in fact, the, uh, the response to those questionnaires are being collated to be, to be sent to the Standards Working Party, which is a member-only working party, who will consider it first off. It will then go to Constitutional Review and come to Standards. Uh, and I do think that's probably one of the areas that will change, but we'll, we'll obviously see uh, how that comes through to Standards. Uh, being recommended to us first by standards working party and then by constitutional review. Any others? I'll look happy to approve those with that amendment. Declarations of interest, please. No? Thank you. Uh, there's a new report from the chairman. Uh, we have a supplementary. Um, I take it members have a copy of the supplementary. Uh, known as 4A. Can I just explain, from the point of view of the public, or anything, that there are 14 members on the standards committee before you four of which are independent, appointed as opposed to elected um, members. So it, it is important to get that definition. They are totally impartial members of that standards committee. I think it's important. It, it makes it clear in this report that um, will be read to you in a moment. Um, but I think it's important that you take that on board. Okay? I'm going to ask um, the author of the report Cause a certain amount of interest um, under agenda item 4A. But prior to that, we have an introduction which may clarify a few matters that give you cause for concern. So, can I introduce to you, Joanne Penn? Thank you, Chairman. This report is presented by the four independent members of the Standards Committee and it reflects the views of us all. Following the changes to the standards regime forced upon the Council by the Localism Act 2010, Planet District Council opted to retain the Standards Committee. The current independent members of this committee were reappointed or appointed for the first time in July 2012, and this signalled a welcome commitment from the councillors to foster high standards within the council. On the 6th of December 2012, an article appeared on the BBC News website branding the council as being dysfunctional and criticising members for contemplating their own labels. Since that article in December 2012, nearly a year ago, much of good has happened in Planet. Councillors have continued to work hard on behalf of those who live in their laws, and some major projects are beginning to come to fruition. Given this, it is fair to ask why it is that the independent members of the Standards Committee have chosen
chosen to put forward this report at this time. To be clear, this report is not aimed at any individual councillor or at any particular political group. It does not seek to address any particular incident or example of behaviour. Rather, it seeks to expose to discussion the prevalent culture of the council, and in particular the ways in which councillors relate to each other and the public, through behaviours that are demonstrated in the council chamber, the local media, blogs, Twitter, and other forms of communication that are open to and are accessed by members of the public. If one were to confine one's impression of the council and its elected members to these channels of communication, it would be difficult to disagree with the impression of Professor George Jones in the article of December 2012 that the council is dysfunctional. Perception is reality, and the public perception of our councillors is formed by access to and experience of interactions with councillors. Those living within the district who have had the benefit of liaising with support and award councillors will no doubt have a very positive experience, a positive perception of that experience. However, for the vast majority of the public and families that have very little personal contact with their ward councillors or any other elected member of the council, for these people, their perceptions will be formed by what is published in the Gallic Gazette, blogs, Facebook and the like. And this perception will impact on the perception of each and every person as they and overshadow and flip the hard work that they do. This perception is of the council as a corporate body, and it is this perception that the independent members of the Standards Committee believe has been examined and changed. This perception of the corporate body is going to be coloured by the attitudes and words of those who are most often heard. At the moment, what is heard demonstrates the lack of respect covered in the report of section 4. Please, let it be clear that the independent members of the Standards Committee do not condone any breach of the Council's democratic rules or a disregard for the ruling of any Standards hearing. Far from it. We are frustrated by the lack of action that we are able to take to prevent those breaches or to provide a meaningful response to any breach. This report is partly a response to this frustration and it signals a fervent desire of the independent members of the Standards Committee to work with councillors to be demonstrated high standards of behaviour. The key point of this report is that the common public perception of this council is low. This perception is reflected by the general public, public in conversation with us, in the reports and articles published in the local press and through various forms of social media. And this perception is the responsibility of the whole of the Council, no matter what political view or affiliation, whether any complaint has been recorded against an individual or not. This report does not seek to imply that all elected councillors behave badly, or that it does not seek to imply that all elected councillors behave badly, or that they have been subject to any complaint. But it does recognise that all members of the Council have a corporate responsibility for the Council as a whole, and that the perception of the corporate body in the minds of the public. The support is intended to be a call for discussion and for an opportunity to address the public perception of the Council as a whole. It is not, as I have said, intended as criticism of any individual or any political party, and it seeks to be an opportunity for all councillors to consider how best to move forward and to demonstrate from all sides of the council chamber the community leadership that the people of Thanet so desperately want. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, we now move on to the agenda item, which is actually 4A. And the summary, just to benefit the public, to review the situation regarding the culture of the council, with particular regard to relationships between members and the general public. I now open uh, the matter for debate. Just an observation. Um, from what I see on the internet, on Twitter, and elsewhere, the, the public 
struggle to understand the difference between the different tiers of local government. They certainly struggle to understand the difference between town councils, parish councils, district councillors, and county councillors, and invariably they lump them all together in their imagination as being these rather than focusing on a specific issue that they can identify as the problem that they feel most aggrieved about. And I certainly believe, uh, from what I've seen, that if enough people uh, shout fire at the same time in a crowded room, then, of course, you're going to get the reaction that you expect. And I think while there is certainly an element of truth, and certainly a great deal of perception out there which draws into question the behaviour of a number of councillors at certain times during council meetings and elsewhere, I also believe very, very strongly that councillors, on the whole, act with great integrity, they work very, very hard for the public they represent. And this report, sadly enough, as presented by the BBC and elsewhere, has somewhat skewed the reaction of the public, and it's not actually a manifestation of the reality that many of us would actually understand. Sitting here. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I am speaking tonight as the, uh, the portfolio holder for this uh, uh, area of the, of the Council to deal with democratic uh, services and uh, governance. This report refers to the misconduct of some councillors. Uh, this report, with all of its sweeping statements, starts by stating that because of the Localism Act brought in by central government, the Standards Committee cannot take any sanctions against the misconduct, but it finishes with a request to take action, so that puzzles me. But we do rely on the Code of Conduct, and a comprehensive training session for elected members was delivered on the 22nd of May 2013, and the attendance can be checked mm. for the councillors. Meanwhile, TDC gets on with delivering its services and its projects. As an illustration, at the last cabinet meeting, we were given a corporate performance uh, report for the last quarter uh, on our key priorities. From 30 projects, five were completed, 23 in progress. All of this in spite of severe cuts in our funding from central government. Oh. And we continue to deliver a balanced budget and to minimise the council tax increases. TDC functions and delivers its services. It uses the mechanisms and processes stated in its constitution and it acts upon the recommendations from the Constitutional Review Working Party. The fact is that some councillors choose not to comply with them. But let me also add that sometimes members of the public don't either. The only way forward is to defend the democratic process. Let's talk about the democratic process and let's talk about the typical councillor's work. Meetings, potentially several evenings per week. Casework from residents, particularly now with the introduction of changes in benefits. Keeping residents informed of their work on their behalf. Reading council papers. This represents many hours per week, per month, per year. Yeah. The allowance that they receive goes a certain way towards compensating them for their time, although TDCs is one of the lowest in the region and nationally. But you also need to consider the energy needed physically and mentally to do this work. <laughs> and last but not least, the emotional energy needed to cope with the stress caused in order to get to have good democracy and good governance we need to have as wide a representation across society in terms of social background age life experience we need to be able to attract individuals who want to serve their community and be part of decisions across a range of issues not just on a particular one. Councillors are not purely lobbyists on one issue. They have to encompass all aspects 
of the life of the residents they represent in their ward and across the district and make balanced decisions. We also need to support all councillors to do their work. Situations and issues are rarely black and white and councillors need to be allowed to do their work within democratic safeguards. We need to uphold the rules set out in the exercising of democracy. We need to balance criticisms against achievements. This report fails on all these counts. It paints all councillors with the same tar brush, and in doing so, it fails its oh, own equality criteria. It makes councillors responsible for the consequences of decisions made by central government. It does not recognise the existing processes and mechanisms for change in TDC's constitution. This is it does not consider the work in progress by this administration to address the legacy issues through the publication of a cabinet report on probity and reputation and the fact that at times we have not been afraid of calling upon the police to assist us. The Probity and Reputation Report, published in April 2013, contains a review of key policies and procedures. The Cabinet also asked the Constitutional Review Working Party to reconsider the issue of filming. Its recommendations were put to full Council and agreed. The decision was that our meetings are open to the public, they are filmed and fields made available on TDC's Nonsense. website. If accredited, media, if accredited media organisations want to film, they can request permission from the chair. Still get These organisations <laughs> need to show their professional credentials Rubbish. so that ethical standards of reporting are complied with. Sorry. This is much more than what happens at the House of Commons. The way the democratic process is exercised can be reviewed and altered, but within the democratic safeguards. This report slaps a massive line across the hard work of all councillors and the achievements of the council. It may have a very detrimental effect on staff morale, this report is subjective and lacks scientific rigour. It is not based on facts, but on perceptions. Although our hands are tied by central government in terms of what sanctions can be applied, and I did meet with the legal department to discuss this very issue on the 7th of July 2013, we have to defend the democratic process and we rely on all councillors to adhere to the code of conduct. We also appeal to the public to be respectful of the same rules. In this context, blaming all councillors for the misconduct of a handful is plain wrong, and it attacks the very essence of why we are here, including you as a standards committee. Let's not forget that this council decided to keep a standards committee and chose a model that included oh, independent she's members. She's them. The misconduct of a handful of councillors not only must be exposed as attacks on the, pro on the democratic process, but this report almost legitimises uh, these attacks by the suggesting the intentions are noble. At least the wording could have been misguided, but not noble, particularly when the same disruptive actions are perpetrated time and time again. The real true culprit in all of this is the yes. austerity policy from central government, which creates a situation where each category of residents is having to fight against another to get a share of the ever-diminishing funding. It allows the rule of the mob and encourages the mentality <coughs> that who shouts the loudest wins. In times of austerity measures, 
discrimination and prejudice are thriving. We must stand firm and steer clear of a frenzy of irate emotions that can trample on our democratic safeguards so that the right decisions are made, not knee-jerk reactions. Beware of political motives, which can derail democracy for small momentary gain. But in the end, we all suffer the consequences of attacks on democracy. I appeal to this committee to note this report for what it's worth, a piece of opinion, and to reiterate its support for our TDC constitution and for the work done by the Constitutional Review Working Party, which regularly reviews and uh, uh, reviews the processes, the policies, and to allow the councillors to abide by the democratic process. Thank you, Chair. I can't turn it off. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yeah. Uh, firstly, a few points in the report that I absolutely agree with. Um, the report says that the conviction of a former councillor has had an adverse effect on the perception of the council. Um, that has to be the understatement of the year. Uh, it, will take, it will simply take years Sorry. to change those perceptions uh, after such an episode. Also, there is no doubt in my mind that the government has done us no favours by removing the formal sanctions that were available for the breach uh, of council code in the past. Um, however, TDC certainly did opt to retain a standards committee uh, and our own code of conduct. Unfortunately, I find it hard to understand how the independent members, with their experience as outlined in the report, could not have predicted the negative press that this report would generate for Thanet, mm -hmm. and that they would not have, have been able to predict the devastating negative effect on council members and officers it would have. I also know that the independent members say they utilise their experience in the service of the council. Unfortunately, the ambiguous, broad-stroke manner of this report has tarnished every member of this council, good or bad, and has consequently done no service whatsoever for this council. I'm sorry, but that's my opinion. Nowhere in this report is there any reference whatsoever, and it has done, I know it's the introduction, we put it in now, but nowhere in this report is there any reference whatsoever to the vast majority of hard-working councillors who literally give thousands of hours of service to local residents year after year. My wife, for instance, a frontline councillor, read this report at 9pm on Tuesday evening after spending two hours dealing with a resident's housing problem. You simply cannot imagine how appalled she was by the way it describes councillors. Neither is there any reference whatsoever uh, to the thousands of hours spent, we spend on committees here at TDC working harmoniously together cross party for the benefit of the district. That's their job, isn't it? The report says, Chairman, can you can we have a bit of quiet while we're talking? We've, 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 all through council defenders, it wouldn't be appreciated, please, if you would kindly be quiet in the public gallery to give members an opportunity to have their say. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the report says there have been no changes in behaviour, but I think there most certainly has been. Uh, the two main parties agree on large areas of the council's business and agree to differ on some individual matters. That's politics and always will be. Where I believe there has been recent change is in the general attitudes towards standards matters. I'm pretty certain that virtually every councillor will agree that there is now just one particular councillor whose anarchistic tendencies and total disrespect for the chairman of committees, the, the chairman of the council, the constitution and procedures uh, is trying to bring the council and every one of us into disrepute. This manifests itself, yet again, at a scrutiny working party only this week, where the chairman had to postpone a meeting due to the to to total disrespect. The culprit done. appeared to actually want the chairman to call the police to mm -hmm. evict him from the meeting. Three of us group leaders present at the meeting expressed our profound disappointment. We jointly felt individuals, an individual was yet again holding the democratic process to ransom and wasting enormous amounts of taxpayers' money. 
Another understatement in the report has to be the words, there have been suggestions that some councillors have stated in public that they intend to, not to comply with the democratically agreed decisions of the council. There's not been suggestions, not suggestions at all. The same individual has stated that that was fact in full council meeting and on the internet. Through words such as unscientific, suggestions, suspicion and appearance, the report is ambiguous and riddled with half truths and innuendo. With regards to the report saying that there are personal attacks being uh, uh, taking place between members, for my part, I know that every time I give my leader's uh, report to full council, in his response, the leader of the opposition will make a personal remark about me. I think that's quite pathetic, but that's his style, and although I used to feel aggrieved by his statements, experience has taught me now to laugh it off. We're in politics, and unfortunately some people can get a little nasty. However, in relation to the word councillors are distrustful of the public, well, that's absolute nonsense. We are elected by the public and represent them to the very best of our ability. As for the situation uh, which, which says adversely affecting the delivery of services, I have to say I am proud to be the leader of a council that is as busy and efficient as any in the county, despite having the deepest and most cruel government grant cuts and our broad social and economic problems, we are still one of the most progressive countries in Kent with a whole host of award-winning initiatives and projects. Really? That was my view from, from being... One moment. Can I just indicate that, please, if we don't have quiet, I don't want to ask you to leave. Um, if you want to take part in listening, uh, listen to the speakers, please be quiet. I won't say it again. Thank you, Chairman. Um, that was my view uh, for, as leader of the council. I'm also the leader of the Labour group. Um, this report, and I'm going to speak now from my view as the leader of the Labour group. This report, this report speaks of action taken within political groups that this option, uh, uh, that we should take action within our political groups and that this option carries a risk of a lack of consistency across the council. That may be so with other groups, I can't talk to them, but I can just say that is just not true of the Labour group. During my term as group leader, I have had one Labour member who clearly stepped across the line of what was reasonable. Not through words here in council or in the chamber or in committee, but by making an inappropriate comment on social media. Despite being one of our longest standing members and the, with the high regard that that held him with, with our members, our party he was suspended from our group for a month. More importantly, before his return to our group, he came into my office, shook the hands of the member of another party that he had offended, and even more importantly, both those involved buried their differences and gave a joint undertaking to work together for the benefit of FANEC and its residents. That's how we, we work in the Labour group in our relations with other groups. In response to the statement saying we are distant from the reality of the people's lives, I found that so... So, it just it's insulting. Come, come along to our Labour councillor surgeries, to our community safety meetings, to all our residents and public meetings. Walk the streets with us delivering our newsletters to the many thousands of homes every month. Meet, come see our meetings with members of the public in their own homes and on their own doorsteps discussing their issues with them eye to eye. It's nothing short of an insult to describe any Labour group members as in any way distant from the realities of people's lives. We certainly are a hung council and the Labour group took control under quite unusual circumstances, whilst we were still only the second largest party back in December 2011. The outgoing Conservative administration was clearly bruised and this was, uh, they were left feeling very, very bitter. Ironically, two years on, and having lost some by-elections and suffered a defection, the Conservative group now appeared to be coming to terms with the re reality of the situation, and the Labour group are now clearly the largest party at TDC. That's why I find the timing of this report quite incredible. In my opinion, generally speaking, relations between 50-plus councillors on, uh, on this council have actually improved over the past year. Unfortunately, though, the report does tar all councillors with the same brush. Uh, and as such, I feel compelled, as the Labour group leader, to clearly explain that my group has no part in the major misdemeanours of this council. 
Do my term as Labour leader, none of my members have been convicted or sent to prison for fraud. None of my members have been sent to prison for drinking or driving. None of my members have been charged for cruelty to animals. None of my members have received a caution from the police. None of my members have stated publicly that they intend not to comply with the democratically agreed process. None, none, decisions, sorry. None of my members have stated that they do not intend to comply with the standards hearings. None of my members have openly mocked the standards regime or on their internet blogs. None of my members have published or threatened to publish confidential TDC papers on the internet, and none of my members have secretly filmed their colleagues during meetings. I'm sure our members would be happy to have any training suggested, but I fear it may not help some other individuals. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Hart. Councillor Paul? There we go. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm the Deputy Leader of the Council and Cabinet Member for Operational Services. I am very concerned that the independent members of the Standards Committee appear to be peddling perceptions rather than hard facts. Tannic District Council is not a dysfunctional organisation. And independent members of the Standards Committee stating that in a public available report appear to be disingenuous. In my experience, the vast majority of members and officers are very hard-working and conscientious. However, we are all aware of one exception who currently appears to be doing their best to incite anarchy into our proceedings. I am very disappointed that we do not have the means to prevent this member trying to bring this council into disrepute. We are a home council and we have to work within in those constraints. Lively debates are a sign of a flourishing democracy. I am concerned that this report might destabilise the democratic workings of the Council. One case that springs to mind is the recent outrageously unbalanced press report slating the newly introduced waste and recycling system. There were teething problems, and I'm in no way trying to gloss over the problems. They were fully expected, and they were dealt with in a very professional manner. The staff members went out of the way to resolve problems, and I applaud them. It was not really surprising that we had a few problems when we introduced completely new collection rounds and a completely new collection system to 67,000 properties. It would have been a miracle not to have encountered a few problems. The facts are that the recycling rate went from 26% to 49% in two weeks. And the collection rate was 99.45% and improving all the time. Though this is still slightly below our normal collection rate. I would suggest that it is repeated falsehoods, malicious gossip and unfounded rumour that are the main problems we face. And they really shouldn't be repeated by people who really should know better. I would recommend that the option you should adopt is to let group leaders deal with their members. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Paul. Did I see Councillor Mrs Hart? Um, well, I will just say that the very eloquent speech that you made to start with does not reflect the report that we received. Um, had that have been in the report to start with, at the beginning, um, it might not have drawn so much disappointment by, I'm sure, over 50 members of this council who work quietly and hardworkingly along with the officers of TDC. And I speak, I hope, for most parties of this council. Thank you, Mr. Right. Other members wish to speak? Councillor Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wasn't aware we were uh, going to be permitted to speak at this meeting, so I haven't prepared anything. I think I would just like to endorse all the statements that have been made by uh, my Labour colleagues. Clearly, there are some political issues that I wouldn't agree with, but um, that's the way things are. Um, I do feel that in the last uh, certainly 18 months, there have been a lot of uh, 
uh, since the time of the, well, in fact, two years now since the time of the change from one political group to another in control. Uh, things have progressively much improved relationship-wise between us. I have to say the council has been uh, unfortunate to have had a number of, uh, well, the Conservative Party has been uh, in the position of having a number of import, uh, important um, failures uh, recognised and uh, expressed in the press and uh, I don't think there's any way that we would want to excuse the behaviour of any of the members of our party who uh, have transgressed. Certainly action has been taken, uh, which I think was uh, appropriate to the circumstances. I do think, however, the council, because of the hung nature and uh, some of the individuals who have crossed the floor, have has been um, in a state of turmoil, political turmoil, due to those due to those changes, particularly as the characters involved uh, were particularly media savvy and went to the press with their own stories. And I have to uh, congratulate them on getting their point over and above everybody else's, no matter what the true facts of the situation were. Mm -hmm. And um, the situation regarding uh, the various points, exports, live exports, pleasure armour, the Trans-Europa situation, have all been bandwagons that a certain person has jumped on, run with them, used his, uh, his media savviness to create mayhem. And certainly I know that uh, as a politician, uh, a local politician trying to just do what you do uh, and do the things, put forward the things that you believe in for the, for the betterment of the area, and, and pleasure armour, Trans-Europa, and uh, live exports, in my view, weren't the big issues that residents expected to get dressed. They simply want, want the, uh, the household waste collection, the dog poo, and all the little things that the council was responsible for managing to be dealt with as a priority, and for not to get involved in all the aggravation that we've been getting involved in. I would also uh, like to say, Mr. Chairman, uh, I regret to have to say this, but I felt that at a time when there were a lot of things going on, that really needed to be dealt with very firmly. Uh, you yourself as chairman and the standards committee did not help by dealing with uh, some of the transgressors in a, in a much firmer manner than actually uh, should have happened. That is my view. I felt there was, there was a time when strong leadership from uh, yourself uh, and the standards committee was needed and uh, didn't happen and as a result. Uh, something akin to anarchy uh, has already been described, has occurred several occasions in this chamber that I'm aware of. Yes, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairman, and thank you for our telephone conversation. Um, when I um, had a very busy weekend, as I always do, and my husband will tell you, I probably, like many councillors, have a 60 hour week as councillor. And the people that I speak to and see in my ward nearly always say to me, thank you for what you do. Total strangers on the bus say, thank you for what you do. I am upset. I am very upset. I've had numerous occasions, Chairman, where I've had anonymous letters. I've had false allegations. I've had Here reports to standards by a minority who get together. And I take it all because of the importance of the work that I do as a councillor. I think because I spoke to you on the phone that Ms. Perman has actually altered her stance this evening. This report, if you read it as a stranger, which the press and everybody else has, makes us look as if 56 of us have something to answer for. Just words like corruption, secrecy, how we behave in public. It makes it sound as if 56 of us behave badly. I'm as good as anybody with a political knockabout. It's part of what happens at full council. Anyone who knows anything about politics knows we do spark off each other. But actually, at the end of the day, and I'm sitting beside Mick, we work together, we get out, these councillors along here, we work together. I have a responsibility for community safety, tourism, and other things. 
people come to me from all political sides for help with issues in their ward, and I, don't, you know, you just help. You pick up the phone, you talk to officers, you do what you need to do. But sometimes you find, by the small minority of people outside of the council, that it slows you down in the real work you have to do. And how many times have I been reported to standards that have been thrown out? But they've turned out, and no one has ever said to me, we're sorry you had to go through this. We're sorry you've had to go to London to find soli the solicitor from the Labour Party to help you. <laughs> Malicious, unfair allegations. Oh dear, oh dear. I, I, I can't repeat some of the things that have been said about me to destabilise me as a councillor. But nothing has upset me more than this. Nothing. And I think an apology is due to the majority of councillors cross party who do nothing but help other people. Christmas Day I get phone calls from people who have nobody else to phone. There is nothing in this report to say it's referring to a minority of people who are badly behaved, who ignore the standards um, things that we decide on here. It lumps us all together. We made an agreement several months ago that we wouldn't mention again the councillor who went to prison. We were finished with it. It was done and dusted. It was something that was raised with me that I reported quite rightly to the monitoring officer that led to that conviction. I'm done with it. I give, someone gives me something that's unpleasant and I report to an officer and I stand back and let the police get on with it. We have two more at the moment that have gone to the police, historic cases. That's what we do as elected members. Our integrity in this is absolutely challenged. I've had a threat to kill me one time. It's not as bad as this. And I think an apology is due. Thank you. Thank you, including this was a standards committee report. No, it wasn't. It was not. It was four individuals of the standards committee. But I, as I say, um, I'm not going to go over all the things that have been, just some of the things that I'm not going to raise that have already been, have already been raised. However, within the report, it talks about recent comments made by some councillors toward members of the public public meetings, public meetings, yeah, um, have been less than respectful. And I would like to know, you know, were there any disrespectful remarks to councillors in these public meetings from, from members of the public? And also, what examples can be given? It then goes on to say there has been suggestions that some councillors have stated in public they do not intend to comply with the democratically agreed decisions of the council, in the full knowledge that there are mean, no, no meaningful sanctions. So some councillors, I want an answer tonight, how many councillors have said that? Yeah? It then goes on further in that same section, which says that the independent members of the Standards Committee have no doubt that these actions are taken with the noblest of intentions. I, that beggars belief to say it's a noble intention. But then, at the end of it, it then goes on to say that it does make a mockery of the rules of the council, where which all councillors are held to account, and suggests that some councillors at least are not prepared to comply with the Code of Conduct. Again, some councillors. How many councillors? And name them this evening. I want the names this evening. Um, it then goes on within this report to talk to what is an admittedly unex uh, un unscientific assessment of the comments made in the press, probably in, 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 in letters, at local bloggers, Twitters, personal conversations, and by local interest groups. 
and, to, and suggests that there is a local suspicion of secret, secrecy, corruption and distance between the council as it's perceived in the offices of Cecil Square. So, the council. It doesn't just talk about members, it talks about the council. Mm -hmm. um, I did actually receive, just after this hit the public domain, an email from the member of the uh, This member of the public has asked this to be kept confidential, but I will just read out one line. This report will further in people's minds the view that all, and all is in capitals, all councillors behave badly and do not act in the residents' best interest. Yeah, and I think that this, you know, this goes on to show. And it also says independent members of standard committees um, have observed the demeanor of councillors within the council chamber towards each other and towards members of the public. Mm -hmm. When I was leader, I used to get bashed around a bit by members of the opposition, long experienced members of the opposition. And one particular one who had given me a bit of a rough ride one evening, he came up to me afterwards and he says, don't worry, it stays in, it stays in here. As soon as we walk out that door, it's forgotten. It stays in here. It's political knockabout. And I've always thought that and followed yeah. that, and I believe that to be correct. Yeah. The report, this report, then goes on, where we're getting even worse, Correspondence published in the local press, in, including official press releases. Yeah. That's the important bit. Official press releases, and, and then it goes on, and columns written by leaders of the main political parties include <coughs> attacks to members and on some occasions towards individual members of the public. I'd like to know which Thanet District Council press releases attack members of the public or other councillors. Um, and you, it goes on to say the overall impression in, of the members, of, of the independent members of the standards mm -hmm. committees of council and its members are distrustful of each other and of the public. Mm -hmm. I have since 1995, after learning quite quickly, had nothing but respect for all the members of the Ireland Council. I myself are, uh, I am for well, my sins, chair of uh, licensing. I think there are quite a few members of the license committee here. I don't think it's daggers, daggers at each other's throat or pistols at dawn or anything else like that. You know, and there are probably every other committee on their own line. And I would say that, you know, um, I am certainly not distrustful of anybody. I might be politically opposed to some of the things that they think, but they'll be the same with me and with others. They'll probably even be partners in my own group who may not agree with some of the things that I think, and vice versa. But that is the nature of the beast. And again, it then goes on to talk about the, the, the committee, the, the standards, the independent members of the standards committee, and the strong opinion that the low public perception of the council is the responsibility of all the members of the, of the council. So it's my fault, it's your 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 fault, because it's all members. That's what this does, right through the whole thing. Yeah? And then it says about respect. And the dominant view of the council and elected members must be rehabilitated as a matter of urgency. Mm -hmm. Sounds a bit Stalinist to me. Um, you know, and, and it says that in order to do this, the old councillors should demonstrate respect in all aspects of their work, including, but not limited to, their dealings with each other, with officers of the council, and crucially, with the public. Well, I certainly have plenty of dealings with the public in my ward, and I, tell you, I have never been disrespectful to them. I don't think I've ever been deliberately disrespectful to any colleague of whatever party, whoever they are. I've never been like that, and I take exception to this. I really do take exception to um, this. I'll, I'll finish by saying councillors are bound by a code of conduct which has several principles. Yeah? 
One, we must treat each other with respect. Well, certainly, the independent members on this committee have not treated the 56 elected members of Thanet District Council with respect. The, the code also says we must not use our position to bring the council into disrepute. Well, I say to you, I say to members of this committee and anyone else in this room, that this report, and thereby all the people behind it, have used their position to bring that District Council into disrepute. Which has been clearly shown in some of the more lurid media um, outgoings. questions you wanted answered there. I don't think it's practical to answer them this evening. If you care to put that in writing, we will answer them in writing. Well, I'm very disappointed considering that this has gone out into the public domain, but you won't answer the questions. Yeah, quite right. Councillor Moore. Thank you, Chair. Well, I'd like to support uh, the views of Councillor Nicholson. Uh, I'd also like to comment um, that uh, I think the public would rightly expect that uh, in the council chamber, the councillors would engage in robust exchanges, and those should, of course, be kept in the chamber. Politics aside, that is a natural function of political life, because we are representing both sides of the political mm. equation. And we would expect it to actually work very, very hard in getting our arguments across. But on a second note, um, one was concerned to me, I had a colleague or a business associate uh, call me from Brighton this afternoon. Um, he rather jokingly said, are you one of those rogues I saw on television last night? <laughs> and I said, yes, I was the one in the camera on the far right-hand side. You know, I was fidgeting over there. But the confusion there was that he had taken as gospel's truth the expression secrecy and corruption. And the way it was presented over the last 24 hours was as a fact. It was axiomatic. Thanet district councillors are as guilty of secrecy and corruption. Nothing else was remembered. That is the way he perceived it. And I had to explain to him what the basis of the report was. Not that it was really interesting. He was actually just pulling my leg, I guess. But it is a source of concern because naturally that has spread not only outside Thanet, but to the entire south of England. And people now believe that we, every one of us, is somehow guilty of some form of corruption or indeed that we hold our meetings in a secretive manner. But of course we've heard tonight, this is simply not true. And I believe the uh, Standards Committee have let us down very, very badly in presenting this as axiomatic fact rather than as a report. Any more? I'm anxious to get them back. Councillor Green. So I shall be very brief because other points I would have made have already been made. I think a very real problem that we have is whether any, restri any um, anything we can actually do to deal with renegade councillors has been taken away from the Standards Committee. And I think we are corporately getting slated for the actions of an individual. I think that individual is very largely due, um, has stirred up lots of rumours, lots of anarchy. Um, you can always see when there's an issue coming up, you know where that person is going to jump. They have announced publicly that they are going to break basically every rule of the council with the pink papers. Um, Ten years old. I mean, they are, mm -hmm. if things are wrong, mm -hmm. it's and recent, it's for a very good reason. Um, the council will release them when the right time comes. Um, but it's their attitude, and their lack of respect to other councillors, and in some cases to the public. Um, they laugh and totally flout any rules of the council. They're hell bent on anarchy and causing disruption. And I think the fact that we're totally incapable of actually dealing with this individual is the reason we're all sitting here tonight. And I think I think this report, and I can certainly see a lot of the rationale there and agree with some of it, but I think corporately um, we're being held responsible for the actions of an individual. And I think if that individual had been dealt with the same as the rest of us would, except we would take any punishment, we wouldn't act like it then I don't think we'd be here in this position tonight. I've actually um, 
spoken with someone from the other end of Kent, and I've spoken with someone from Eastbourne who actually rang me, commenting um, about the same as Council and Wars over there, um, about the council here. And we're all seen as corrupt. I've, I've had um, some residents I was dealing with, although they were doing it jokingly, um, they were talking about um, the council all being corrupt. And it's, it doesn't help us. I think the issues could be raised. And I think we should really be putting pressure on to be able to take action against people that are a problem. And I think that's what we really should be doing. Um, I don't really think unless we can... I mean, take it, we could take training courses, but the person that wouldn't take the training courses and wouldn't subscribe to anything that came out of it is the one that's causing the problem. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I've been quite shocked. It's already been said about the report. Um, when it came through, I actually spoke to a lady um, at Dreamland where I was on Saturday morning, but I hadn't had a chance to read it all. Um, it has taken me back, and it's already been said by many here. Um, I've been with the authority, what, 11 years, I think, um, 10 years. And looking around the room here tonight, uh, there's people, um, non opposition, whatever. Um, I class them as friends, um, always have done. That is me. Um, others might not be like me. Uh, I think the first time I, was, I have been very non vocal and full council chair for quite some time. I put on with committee work and everything else. Uh, which I'm very proud to say always works well, and that's been said as well. There's very rare there's any political things happen. I think once uh, Councillor Lucas, and uh, I know he chairs licensing, but when I chaired that committee once in all those years, um, something was said by a councillor, which I forget who it was, and it doesn't matter, it was quite political, but we didn't need that in licensing, it doesn't happen. Uh, but I, I mean, what, what is people are talking about about an individual tonight? I mean, my first confrontation here uh, was a member of the opposition where he mentioned a uh, person who was removed from the council or lost, um, and has paid the price or paying the price. Um, I think most of us have got a bit fed up with that. That is old news now. Um, if there's more to come, as Councillor Johnson said, I'm, I'm not looking forward to that. But um, on the full council, um, this comment was made, and yes, I, I'll be honest, it annoyed me. Anybody who knows me, I haven't got a temper, I don't, because it, what's inside me will kill me, I think. If I, But I did happen to comment on a cabinet member from the opposition, what he said, and I knew a little bit about something he was involved in. And he come flying over the, and I thought, oh, well, blimey, this is it. My lovely wife got in the way. Um, <laughs> It, it looked that he was going to clobber one. Mm. And the picture was in the paper, and I can tell the public here tonight, and I think members know that. I know that certain members weren't very happy with me. It was nothing of the sort. The gentleman came over, said, Mick, none of us want to waste our time as with what we've just said. He shook my hand, and friends that follow after the weekend phoned a lovely <coughs> conversation, but there it was on the front page of the Arlethanic Gazette that's done us no good at all. Uh, quite a few years now, it's changed a little bit now. But there was that picture with the gentleman's arm in front of my face, taken by the person who's been, yeah. hasn't been mentioned tonight, the people who we're talking about. In other words, I was just about to get a beating, and that was at the full council. I wasn't proud of that. I wasn't proud of it at all. But it shows what has been said that we can and we, we work together, and uh, it, it happened in this chamber, nowhere else. Thank you. Are there any other members, particularly from the Stance Committee? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, well, it's a bit of a damning report, isn't it, for us who sit on the committee? Uh, and what I, you know, the way it's been worded, um, we know where the responsibility comes from the disruption. And I wouldn't put it down to one individual, uh, are others. But, you know, in this uh, committee's input, independent <coughs> members of the Standards Committee 
are of a strong opinion that the low public perception of the council is the responsibility of all members of the council. Mm. Now, I know that Councillor Johnson works hard. Well, we all work hard. And it was only the other day that I was standing <coughs> on the street, a guy came up to me and said, are you Bob Grove? I said, yes. He said, thanks for all the work you're doing, mate. We don't often get that. We get the blame because it's raining, and we get the blame because the dog is on the pavement. And I haven't got a dog. It's always our fault. And I don't think this report has done us councillors any good to do actually work and work hard on our job. And the other thing I think is that we need some teeth put into the Standards Committee so we can deal with the individuals. We should have the power to say out for six months or out for a month or whatever and deal with them the responsible way that we should do. Then a report like this would not have even been written. Thank you, Chairman. be helpful because at the last standards meeting we did report that a letter had been written um, to the appropriate authority in relation to the very matter you've, we've had a reply literally in the, the last few days which um, I'm happy to yeah. ask Mr Patterson to do. Uh, just to uh, remind members that on the recommendation of the Standards Committee full council uh, agreed that we would write to the Local Government Association to ask them to lobby Council for the uh, to, to lobby Parliament, the LG, the, uh, the CLG in particular, being the relevant department, um, to consider a legislation to introduce some sanctions, uh, and we did give uh, some uh, anonymised examples of some of the issues that were were affected in the planet, and uh, we also recognised the limits of with all the best will in the world, the limits of what group leaders can do. Um, uh, that uh, letter sent some months ago. We didn't receive a reply for, for quite some time, but we, we did send a couple of reminders. Uh, and in the end, I had a contact uh, about three weeks ago saying that the LGA had referred it to their legal department, which I thought was a, a bit unusual, really. It's a very straightforward letter. So <coughs> we don't have any sanctions. We need them for the following reasons. Um, can you lobby CLG to, to, uh, on that topic? Uh, in any case, it's, it emerged uh, from the legal department in due course. And uh, I'm now informed by uh, the LGA. I, mean, I spoke to Rebecca Cox today, who's, a, who's an official there. Uh, her message, I'm afraid to say, was, you know, we're a members club of, of all councils. We're a broad church. We represent councils of, of, of varying political hues. Uh, so we don't think that this is an issue on which we're willing to lobby government at the moment because there's likely to be divided opinion on it. Um, I'm not completely surprised by that. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but we did think that uh, if we could persuade the LGA to, to take up our case, uh, they, they, they would be a powerful lobby uh, for the changes that we would like to see. Um, so I think what I've said to the Standards Committee before is to remind members that uh, uh, the CLG themselves set a three to five year review timeline for the new system, which frankly is, in my view, is similar to putting it in the long grass. Um, but the Committee on Standards and Public Life <coughs> Uh, has made it clear that they are going to review the current system next year in 2014. They've allocated time in their programme to do that, and I think it is incumbent then that councils like ours, uh, who are experiencing problems, give evidence to the committee uh, of what, uh, what, what the issues are, because there's no doubt about it, if the Committee on Standards and Public Life makes recommendations direct to the Prime Minister of the day uh, about the need for change, then actually we can expect that something may well happen. Um, I'm sorry that, uh, to say that we probably do have to wait to the standards, uh, to the Committee of Standards and Public Life calls for evidence next year before we can do any more. Uh, we are, uh, as we've reported to members in the past, we are limited in the action that we can take. Uh, the sanctions that we can take we have very clearly expressed in our procedures. They very often, as members of the Standards Committee who sit on these subcommittees uh, and deal with complaints, know we're we're very often left with having to call on uh, other people, the council, group leaders, other people to take action on our behalf. And the, and the, uh, and, and the, uh, the major sanction is to censure, to name and shame. Uh, and in my experience, and I've said this to members uh, in the Standards Committee, and I'll say it now publicly, that I, I do think that most members, in my opinion, care very much about the reputation and that censure, therefore, is and can be a powerful sanction. It shouldn't be the only tool in the box. That's, that's my own personal opinion. But it is, a, uh, for those members who value their reputation, and that is most members, 
uh, then sanction is an effective uh, it, it, censure uh, can be a, a, an effective uh, sanction uh, and an encouragement to, to the member in, in, in question, uh, you know, to, to to abide by the code in future. Um, but of course, there aren't sanctions for those members who want to disregard the code, uh, and uh, you know, I can't I can't escape that fact. It's it's inescapable that if a member wants to disregard it, uh, then then we don't have uh, effective sanctions that can deal with that. Are there any other members that wish to speak? Yes, of course. At the last standard meeting, we, we discussed about the behaviours. And the arrangement I understood that evening was that you were going to talk to the leaders of the various groups um, so we could move forward. And I understood that was what was going to happen. So when this report arrived, it was a surprise to me. I'm sorry I was emotional earlier, but I've been here since 1995. And okay, raise your eyes and think it's amusing, but it isn't funny. I'm sorry, Miss Pearman, it isn't funny. My children hear what you said and what you wrote to the four of you. Bullia. Oh. Oh, Bullia. Yes. Sorry, sorry. My family hear that I am corrupt and they know that I'm not. I am the Vice Chair of British Destinations, which is a national organisation for people from Blackpool right down to Brighton and this morning. And in December, when I go as the Vice Chair to London to that meeting where people are nominating me to be the Chairman of a national organisation, I will be the Councillor from Thailand with the reputation for secrecy, corruption, etc. Exactly. Excuse me. Thank you. Very much. But, you know, uh, but what I'm saying is. The outcome of this is we've just launched our economic development and regeneration report, which again will be affected by this. So when something like this is written, the person or the people involved need to think about the long-term implications. Let's sort out the problems, and the, the way we were going to sort them out was you were going to meet with the leaders, which I understood happened. I didn't expect, as a member of this committee, a report to be in the public domain that I heard about from members of the public before I'd even read it. Um, you know, I thought that we would actually maybe even have this paper in a proper manner and with the introduction we got this evening, which now puts it into a little different perspective. But this report did not. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Uh, a meeting did take place, um, thanks to the leader. Um, he entertained us in his office and I have to say it was a very congenial meeting of the leaders and the chief executive. Um, our frustration from the point of view of the independence as has been said by Mr Patterson is that our inability mm. to carry through what is really required by the Standards Committee primarily because of the Localism Act or Douglas and Bill as it is now and we had a long discussion over some one and a half hours and the, the, the result at the end really was stalemate because there was very little that we can do at this stage except to say, as we've indicated, that as and when the opportunity presents itself, then um, the parliamentary committees will hear our views um, shared with other councils as well. I can't report further on that. Are there any other views? Yes. <coughs> I would certainly personally want to apologise for any upset for anybody. It should never be my intention, and nor was it the rest of us intention to upset you. You employ us to help raise the standards. That's what we're here to do. Now you think that this report doesn't help. Okay, well let me tell you that before I had this appointment, I know nothing about politics, I'm not interested in party politics, but I'm very interested in people. And I came to Thanet only about 15 years ago, and the first thing I learned was that this council, I didn't know any of you, but this council was a very, very poor council, okay? That was all I heard. I then met you, and I could see, and I've said before in the Standards Committee, haven't I, how very hard-working you are. I know that. But I would put my name to this report, not because of an individual thing, but because of a collective thing. And unless we cooperate, unless we work together and stop being so defensive, 
We mm. will not change the reputation. I've read the whole of the, um, the standards for public life uh, committee report. It, this goes through every part of public life. The world has changed. It has changed. I came into here and found, yes, you get on with each other, fine. And you get on with the people you know, fine. But what Joe was saying in the report is that the public who don't know you have this impression. I promise you, you don't know this because you don't know them. Exactly. Let me read the last bit, the last bit of the of the standards for committee of the committee of standards in public life's report. One of the questions they asked was, and I think this is really important for all of us, because otherwise we'll have all come here, people would have been very upset, and we won't have made anything creative out of it. What do we now know about what worked best in promoting high ethical standards in organizations providing public services? And their answer is, we know a lot about what works best in promoting high standards. The key elements remain much as Lord Nolan suggested. Robust principles, which we already have. Effective codes tailored to the particular circumstances of the body concerned. Training and guidance. Good, relevant prompts. Strong leadership and organizational processes demonstrating the principles in practice, sure and effective responses to unethical behavior and independent scrutiny. Together, these elements help an organization to achieve the right culture. I understand why you personally feel attacked and you're defending yourselves, but unless you take it as a corporate idea, unless you say, Let's work together. Yes, I know, but the public doesn't know you are. That's the problem. I know you are because I'm here and I witness it. And individuals of the public witness it. But the general thing is not that we're working together. If you take on training, whatever you think best for yourselves, then you're demonstrated that you are not arrogant, that you are not self-satisfied. You know, train. Even if it's ethical training, make, I know you're terribly busy. Media training. Tough. We do. Media training. Media training is not the same as ethical training. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you have to one, keep one, at it. One person has the floor, please. You, it's keeping at it. It's being seen, being seen to make this effort. You don't believe me, and I'm really sorry that you don't believe me, but this came from our deepest concerns. Mm. I have several on. Uh, Councillor King first. Yeah. 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 I have the greatest respect for you, and I understand where you're coming from. But the information mm -hmm. is taken from blog sites, tweets, um, public perception. There is no way that the authors of this report have spoken to everybody in Canada, yeah. no more than I have. But you will take your information from those who enjoy blog sites and all the rest of it. I have no time for them. I have a job to do. I have to get on with my life. But people spend a lot of their time nowadays tweeting. And, you know, Ms. Roger, you know, we work together on the domestic violence forum. We do a lot of things outside of this council that the public don't know about. But if you take your opinions as a body representing improving standards from blog sites and tweets, and sometimes a press that gets some things very badly wrong, I went to the One Billion and Rising fundraiser at the Tom Tom Theatre, and I was on antibiotics, and because I have ME, and that's why I get emotional, I don't drink, very rarely drink. If I do, I'll have that much. And the next week in Smudger it was that I was first up for the wine and the food and all that rubbish. The issue that night was about one billion women who die in the world through violence. But the press story was about that I had had some wine. Well, I didn't. So, you know, all of us like a drink, but I actually can't drink for very good reasons. A report came to standards recently about me that you know about. 
again was an allegation that was disgraceful. And my, they sniggered at the back about my children knowing. One of my sons went out one evening and people were photographing him. I've had two of my children beaten up because I was a parliamentary candidate by vicious, nasty people. But because I feel I can do a good job as a councillor day to day, to day with the people that you genuinely help, you put up with this. And I would expect that a report would recognise the work that the majority of us do and not just be a damning report that actually will seriously affect us outside of this area as Eastbourne and Brighton. I will hear all of this in December when I go to that public meeting in London, Good. that I come from this council, because this report is in the public domain. And we do have training, we have regular briefings. There are some councillors who don't come, but the majority of us go to all of those briefings and trainings about ethics and Okay, someone said media. It's not just about media. There's not a lot of point in media training because the media will do the story that's most popular. Nothing about our economic development and regeneration um, uh, thing that we adopted the other night. But this story is top story. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, as a former member of the Standards Committee, and I'm sure you remember that so one the reason that I actually declined membership of it was because of the state we've got into today with no effective sanctions or actions to be taken. Um, and uh, I have said before, I say again, I think, you know, you get what you deserve and this is what we've landed up with. But what, I'm, what I can't uh, understand tonight is, and I've listened to some, definitely some political speeches going on now, um, but there seems to be very much uh, a condemnation of the um, report. Um, and I'm actually wondering where that leaves the present committee. Because obviously there seems to be a huge difference between the standards members, committee, especially the independents, and members. Um, it seems to me that they've given the work of uh, the independents and the, the committee a big thumbs down, mm. uh, a big vote of no confidence. So where are you going? How are you now going to go forward with such a gap between you? Um, is there a future on Planet Council in the present light for a standards committee? Thank you. Clearly, that it has to be addressed. We don't disagree with that. But I have um, Councillor Mrs. Hart. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say to. Um, okay. Um, that your report does not reflect your language tonight. Um, your report actually is inflaming the public's perception. You speak to our residents who we deal with. Ask them what they think of us. But the, the councillors that are on the streets helping them because they come to us when they've tried every avenue and they come to us where the bridge <coughs> that we make that contact with people that maybe they can't make that contact with. You are, you, you've actually ruined what we try to do on a day-to-day -day basis and you know we some of us have other jobs and we take the being a councillor on as being part of community and helping our community and working within our community and your report i'm sorry but has done nothing to assist us in what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and your language here tonight would be very nice if that went out in the public domain and not this councillors with an S. It is not councillors with an S, it's not all of us. It's individuals or a few. And I would like to see the language that's been spoken here tonight by you, the report that you did first off. Wow. I would like to see that in the public domain, please. Um, rather than this, this damning report and it might address some of the damage that we are feeling. 
Chair Penn. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Chairman. First of all, I have never meant, we never meant, any personal slight on any member. We are passionate about what we do, as are you. And it is this passion that we want to protect, that we want to make it clear to the community that this is what everybody at Thanet District Council wants to do. Thanet District Council, every single one of us, whether we're elected members, whether we're officers of the council, or we're independent members, we actually care about this council and about this island. What has been concerning us as independent members is that the individual work that you do, and you all do, it doesn't matter which member you are, which political affiliation, where you sit in the council chamber, that work is amazing. The fact that we've got Dreamland back, the fact that things are moving forward, this is all good. What we are observing as independent members is the fact that some of this is being eclipsed, and it has been eclipsed, and it's not getting the recognition that it deserves, because there is a perception out there, and it's a perception of the public, not our perception, it's the perception of the public, that there are problems in Thanet District Council. What I've heard tonight is a discussion that actually belies that public perception. Yes. When you, intervi when you interviewed me, when I was interviewed for this post as independent member of the Standards Committee, one of the questions that I was asked is what is the kind of behaviours that I would promote as an independent member of the Standards Committee? And my answer was that you have to be, you elected members, have to be like Caesar's wife. You have to be seen to be above any kind of criticism whatsoever. What this report, and we've suffered, and I do apologise to you personally, mm. Councillor Johnston, <laughs> what we have suffered is the smudger effect with this report, just as it happened to you with smudger, and it's happened with all members of this council on numerous occasions, is that bits and pieces have been pulled out, and I take your point, when I first saw <clears throat> on the various websites about corruption and secrecy, I thought, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. But that's a very salutary lesson for all of us, that this is what happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're trying to protect, is the public and our interaction with the public. Councillor Moore, then I've got the Councillor Mr. Mark and Councillor Mrs. Green and Councillor Hart. Councillor Moore. Thank you. I think we're all familiar with the expression publish in haste and repent in leisure. Um, like it or not, the, the genie is out the bottle, you know. Everybody now views us as being secretive and corrupt. And if I sit here this evening and look at the Twitter stream or Facebook or indeed my child weblog, which has just gone up there, uh, we are being viewed with derision, either directly as a consequence of tweets which are coming out of the chamber, comments elsewhere, many other sources of social media. We cannot put social media back in the bottle. And unfortunately, what we have created for ourselves is, more and more likely, what we have created for other people is a, is a vicarious source of entertainment. As I'm seeing it on my iPad tonight, I'm seeing what's happening as it goes out on all these different social media sites. We are being viewed with derision. Nobody is taking us seriously. And people are firmly entrenched in their views that we are secretive and corrupt. And all the conversation we've had in this chamber this evening does not make one jot of difference to the way it's been broadcast out this evening. We have lost control of the situation. And now we have to sit here and think how on earth we are going to get some form of control back because, as I said at the very beginning, publish in haste, repent at leisure, and the genie is out of the bottle. Mm -hmm. Council, no confidence. Thank you. Um, I've listened to, to a lot of this this evening. Um, I don't agree with everything in this report. I don't agree with the way it was always expressed. I think the, the balance has come probably more verbally tonight. However, I do, I am left with the impression that we, we're, we're coming across as incredibly self-pitying tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're coming across yeah, um, as missing the point spectacularly. Mm -hmm. yes. That it's about not what we think about what we do, it's about what the public thinks about what we do. And I would rather 
see this discussion move on to some positive um, thoughts about how we can improve the public's perception of this council, which is something we all care about. To sit here and listen to an array of cabinet members blaming, and I've listed them, the Conservatives, the Independents collectively and individually, blaming the public, blaming the press, <laughs> blaming the government, and even more, most ludic ludicrously, blaming austerity for the, the reputation of this council, <laughs> is one of the most ludicrous things I've had to sit here and listen to. There we are. Can we, can we stop this? And as Councillor Moores has just said, can we address mm -hmm. the situation where I am a member of a council which has not got the kind of reputation that I have always considered a, a council should have. I try to uh, do what I can to behave individually. I cannot control all, all the other members and how they behave. But can we move this discussion on as to, to some way how we can address the public perception of this council in a positive way mm. and not look as if we're incredibly self-obsessed um, and navel-gazing. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to say I'm not feeling at all defensive. I'm very well aware of the public perception of the Council. I have been since I moved down here about 18 years ago, at which point I would only have to get in a taxi or meet with neighbours or relatives. And if they knew you were standing for the Council or on the Council, I'd be regaled with stories of fake shakes and God knows what else. And I think that perception has just persisted. Mm -hmm. um, I was also going to ask um, what way um, there is to go forward. I know training is being suggested, but I'm not quite sure that that is actually going to deal with public perception. Um, we have had lots of standards training regularly, you have the odd individual who doesn't turn up for it, but I'm not quite sure that that's going to change public attitudes. Uh, and I do, I do think that is very difficult. Um, I find the, I put on my own way, I'll represent my resident, relative, relatives, <laughs> that sounds good, isn't it? I represent um, my residents, um, work a lot with community groups, as other people here do. Um, and I think people, most people just get on with, keep their heads down, get on with their work. Um, and I find it, the one that I do find difficult is the corporate responsibility for the actions of all councillors, um, because that I find I can't accept. I can accept responsibility for my own actions, but not that of all other councillors who may be in um, And again, I think that goes back to needing strong sanctions, but I'd be interested to hear um, what other ways, maybe any other ways in addition to training that the independent members think the sanctions I do agree with you, it doesn't need to be exploring. Thank you, Councillor Um Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Yes. Ten years ago, I got uh, elected to council, uh, and I'm a local lad, born in the council house just up the road here. I played in the local park as a child. I've, uh, I went to local schools. I worked on this building as an apprentice. And I might be stupid, I might be really, really naive, but when I took my seat, and it was just here, when I took my seat in this council ten years ago, I had just a little bit of water in me. I had a little bit of a lump in my throat because I felt very proud that someone locally, someone, just an ordinary guy, could get here and could get into this council. And this report, I'm afraid, undoes all of that feeling for me. It just undoes any pride you can have. You know, it, it, it really is. Uh, because of its nature, because of the way it's worded, because of the way it doesn't say all those things you said in your introduction, not one word of it in this report. And this is what the, the, the press uh, uh, picked up on. The fact of the matter is that this report by you four independent members, if, if it were about you four independent members, and one of you turned out to be a wrong one, 
and we wrote a report about you that tarnished you all, you'd be yeah. wild. You'd be absolutely popping wild. That's what this report does to us as members. And I'm saying to you, you've you, you've let the genie out of the bottle. You've done exactly what Councillor Moores has said. You've, you've, you've let the genie out of the bottle, and it's your job, not ours, it's your job to put it back in there. And I want to see some action here tonight to try and do that. And that's we need some apologies, to be honest. It's really great. That is really great. That is I'm not saying for one minute, to us. <laughs> I'm not saying for one minute that we're all angels. I'm not saying that we've done everything right. I'm not saying that, that we're above reproach or anything like that. I'm saying that generally speaking, the members of this council are good people. Good, decent, honest people. That's how they got elected. And I'm saying that this report does not reflect that in one way whatsoever. And you need to make that clear to the public after tonight's meeting. You really do. Or you would have done us an injustice. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Nicholson. I thought perhaps you wanted someone to have it. Thank you. things that have just been said. At the end, and I entirely agree with Councillor Moore's, um, the genie is out of the bottle. Um, the one thing you can do is, is get it back in, I assure you. It's called the internet. And I am minded of what was said at the beginning this is going to go of, back to this, me. Um, uh, of this meeting. Uh, we had this, it's a bit preamble given, which doesn't appear in the report. Yes? That won't be making the headlines in the next few days. That won't appear on BBC and things like that. Believe me, they will not be interested. What we can do is, well, we will have to have a real consideration of this. A real consideration, not tonight. Well, I agree with you, uh, Councillor Hart. Um, I'm still waiting for an apology. And I think that there's 56 members that actually need an apology because of I don't. some of the things that have been said. It's been said also tonight that this was taken out of context. Yes? Not meant to sound the way it did. Shall I read out paragraph 1 3? Or, or, or I'll, I'll just take a little bit out of it. The current independent members of the Standards Committee bring with them a wealth of experience gained in professional service in other arenas, including extensive management and leadership gained both in the public and private sectors, including district councils, members, membership of the bench and other voluntary organisations, and I'm sure very worthy. Are you telling me that you didn't realise what this was going to do? What damage, long-lasting damage, this was going to do. Honestly. Because it should have been apparent, and I'll just finally by saying, and to, with, with town councillor Tom King, Tom, I agree entirely with what you said. You were quite right in summing up. We're going to get afraid of the I've got one more to Council Moore's, and I'm, I'm rather anxious because we've been an hour and a half now discussing it, and I'd like to resolve the matter. <laughs> Just to illustrate like to how them. reporting spreads very rapidly out of the chamber, um, a few minutes ago I said something, and I said something along the lines that we had lost control of social media. This has now been reported out to the council. I've even got the KM now interrogating me on Twitter. That we seek, we are seeking as a council to control social media. Mm, you are. Now, can you understand how this kind of thing now spreads out of context, along with the sort of thing we've been discussing this evening in terms of suspicion and secrecy and corruption? A simple expression, we've lost control of social media, now spreads all the way into Kent, and more coming through into the press. We are seeking as a council now to control social media. It is whispers on top of whispers on top of whispers. And to the gallery, no, we have lost control of social media, if you would like to report that, please. And I think it's the fact that we have no control of social media, that people tweeting in the audience understand that very clearly. I am not saying that any one of us here as councillors is seeking to exercise control of social media. I am, in fact, recognising that we are in the 21st century and social media runs out of our control as a council. 
We have to learn okay. to live with that, to work with it, and understand the new mediums of communication. Here, here. Here, here. Let the cameras in. Let the cameras in. Let the cameras in. Let the cameras in. Instead of editing and cutting and shutting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's interesting that the social media lobby, uh, you know, insisting that they rule us now and that the democratic process must subjugate itself to them. Hmm? Having been burned by social media, I, I do try and limit what I do on social media. And I find, in my personal view of social media, that it's only one step up from dropping a dog turd through your local political party letterbox. Oh, very nice. Very showing us respect. Yeah. And there we have it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my view of social media because, and I know some of the individuals who are involved in putting out wise. social media. My two Facebook profiles. My colleague here is very yeah. reputable in the way that he does things. Uh, is, a, is a fine example of what should happen. Unfortunately, there are an awful lot of people who like to put half-truths and mistruths on the blog, so then they get them. people who are <laughs> should know better making comments and taking these half truths and spinning them out in a way that uh, is, is uncontrollable. It was a fact that John uh, Alan Paul threatened my member of staff. I've got a crime report number well, about with a pair of secateurs, well, and he well, sat as deputy sure leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you telling me they don't use threatening behaviour? Yeah. This is supposed to be about a Sorry. and code of conduct. Well, he candy, sat there candy, 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 about tweeting please. and tweeting. Becca. Could we keep quiet up this end, please? Will you please be quiet in the public gallery. You have no right to speak. Point like that. Through your council, but only that way. <laughs> Him? He is my counsellor. No, Canty, hang on. Hang on. Councillor Wise, have you finished? No, uh, and I would like to to state that all of us, whether you, the people sitting in the public gallery or not, all of us started, uh, got involved with the council because we thought and had views and were passionate in yes. exactly the same way as they are. We decided, we joined political parties because that was the way to get elected. We put ourselves up for election, no, we were anymore. asked to do, and we have tried very hard to do the things that we believe are right in, in spite of all the difficulties over finance and the, the political shenanigans and all the rest of it, to do the things that we believe are right. And if the people are sitting in the public gallery who are like sitting there tweeting and uh, making comments that are not helpful about what hard-working people are trying to do, then perhaps they should put themselves up next time and see whether the public is with them. Or whether they find that they are in actual fact minorities in the way that they think, and that is actually the, there is a broader church than they actually represent. But he can sit there and tweet at the same time. <laughs> So this double standard. Sorry, I'm prepared to go. If we have one more outburst from the gallery, I shall clear you. You'll have to go out, I'm afraid, because we've got a lot of business to follow this. Clear yourself. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think we're losing sight of what this debate is about. It's about a report that's been written by four individual members. Uh, I have a scientific background, and if a report like this came forward without any shred of evidence, there's no evidence in, of any statement in the report, I would throw it out as totally worthless. And I, I personally will be very disappointed if the Standards Committee accepts this report tonight. I personally think you should send it back so that every statement in there is evidenced by, by um, proper evidence that the statements have some validity. I accept that the reputation of this council is not good, and there are all sorts of reasons for that. But this report is not constructive in the slightest. I'm told that the, the individual members have vast experience. But why don't they use it? and make some constructive suggestions rather than this report which is totally unevidenced and intended in, in my view to be destructive. I think we've got to the stage now where I would ask you where do you wish to go with this and don't tell me. Um, um, I think just is that a proposal coming from Councillor Green? No. 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 I can't do that Chair, I'm not a member. This is crazy. I would like a 
make a proposal to, to the committee that this report is returned to the authors and is, is evidenced, therefore I'll get back my answers to my questions, by the way, in that, and then is re represented in, in, in a proper um, standard of format and then can be reissued if they, if, if they so wish to. And please bring it to this committee before you issue it. Is there a second to that? Thank you. Um, are we in favour of that? Please, can I have a show of hands? One, two, would you put your hands right up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those are eight. Are those against? One, two, three. Oh, the one is a remark, may it be That's what that's done. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have a number of items to follow this. The post will turn in five minutes. Thanks, sir. Not helpful about.